Hey everyone, Sir Timur here again. So today, as we get closer to the end of the patch, I just wanted to bring you guys some classic gameplay of Sundisk. I actually realized that I never, I've never posted a video of Sundisk after it got updated, why, like two patches ago now? So after a Seer got buffed, so that he now counts for landmarks, I actually never made a Sundisk deck. So I figured it's all about time for me to do that, and that's what we're gonna bring you guys today, even though I know it's a little bit old. I still think this deck is really, really strong, and I think a lot of people sleeping on it. Uh, I'm actually been climbing decently with this on, on EU. I'm Diamond 1 now, uh, because it actually does very well into a lot of things in the meta. Like, Quicksand is still a pretty, very powerful card. So, if you're looking for something to climb with at the end of the season, I recommend this. This is actually pretty good. So, let's actually get right, right down to the deck. If you're not seeing this deck, it's Sundis. So, it's Mono Shurima, Sundis. Now, when you play four Shurima cards, the Sundis gets summoned to your board automatically. And the whole idea is that you try to trigger the Sundis as soon as you can. And the way that you can do that is going to be through leveling up Seraph and leveling up Asir. Those are the two easiest Ascend the Champions to level up. Renekton and Nas Nasus take way too long, so that's why you don't play it in this deck. Plus, Seraph especially, his ability is very, very powerful on its own, even without the Sundus level up, right? Because Seraph is able to let you control the board if you have enough landmarks that get triggered. So, how do we get to that win condition? Well, we play a lot of landmarks. Ancient Preparation can count two, ca counts as two towards the Seer. Um, tre treasure Seeker can count as two if you summon the Walking Sands, right? Ancient Hourglass counts as two towards the Seer, uh, towards Seraph, and he also, uh, towards a Seer, sorry, and counts as one towards Seraph, and he also lets you save your units against stuff like Vengeance. Rock Copper counts as two towards the Seer as well. Uh, so you can see how quickly you can level up a Seer, naturally, and how quickly you can level up Seraph, because you have stuff like Perseverian, Rolling Sands, you're playing Rabble Earth that gives you two other Rolling Sands, making the opponent really awkward for them how to be able to develop. Soothsayer can keep your Sun Disc protected, and also even keep your Champions protected, if you don't have to worry about Scorch Earth. One time in a bottle, because the Sun Disc did receive a nerf, where now it only advances by nine, so by having time in a bottle, it means that you're able to actually trigger the Sun Disc, two turns earlier than you will otherwise. And you can also do some cheeky stuff with, with timing a bottle that will let you uh, kill the opponent if you're able to summon like a Restore Divide a Sarcophagus and a Restore Divide at burst speed. Endless Divide is really good. It counts as three, right? You get an Endless Divide, it dies, you get a Landmark, it revives into another. So it counts as three, so we're Seraph, and it's an amazing blocker. Triple Quicksand stops so many things in the meta right now, especially because Pesky loses from Overwhelms. Rider Barcane lets you kill Poppy or the targets. Uh, Unravel Earth lets you attack units. Desert Naturalist just to kind of give us a better matchup into Thralls uh, and other landmark decks. One Golden Ambassador to try to draw our champions together with the one Rider Calling. And then finally, two Rider Negation to protect against Vengeance, Ruination, or anything like that. That's kind of the quick breakdown of all the cards in the deck. Again, as you see in the matchups, the whole point is just to work towards making your Sun this go boom, right? Have the restore sun this on the field. So everything else that we do is just towards the win condition. This deck does very well against a lot of control and slower decks, but it doesn't do well versus aggro. So just be mindful of that when you're playing this deck. That if you're running if you're running against aggro, I would not recommend playing. I would not recommend playing this deck if you're running into a lot of aggros. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the games coming up soon. Uh, stay for the end of the video for some mulligan tips if you're interested in that. And as always, if you like the content, please make sure to subscribe. We post NOR videos every single day. I'll see you all at the end of the video. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Nami Twisted Fate. Now, they play Crumble. Well, they don't play Crumble exactly, but they play the Landmark, right? Which means that we have to be a little bit careful about it. I mean, sorry, they play the Tailstone. Which means that maybe... Maybe we are going for the... Because I don't like the Rock Hopper. Because opponent just does double trouble. Maybe we have to go for the Soothsayer. I want to see if I can find the Soothsayer to protect our Sundus against Crumble. Now, Crumble does require them to have... Well, I guess we can just Rider Negation. Okay, we can do Rider Negation. That's also just as good. Yeah, Rider Negation is just as good. Uh, the Rock Hopper is not that great here. Again, because of the fact that the opponent has access to Double Trouble. Which is why they're going to start with Netstern, right? Kind of like the Perseverium over the uh, Endless Devout. Gives me some draw, aka gives me more options. 
We can go ahead and attack and get our two damage in. Opponent doesn't have enough to do crumble because it doesn't have any units in the field right now. So we don't have to worry about Rider Negation for now. Uh, Rider Negation is also going to be really good for later. Tentacle Smash is kind of annoying. I guess that is kind of annoying. Let's go ahead and do this now then. We do have blockers. Opponent just showed us that they potentially don't have double trouble. We could predict right here. I don't know if it's necessary just yet. I think I want to draw first and have it still have enough mana for rider negation. Because now the opponent can do the crumble, right? So now the opponent could actually do the crumble to punish our Sundays. And that's what we want to keep the rider negation for. Because they could do Telstone crumble on the tentacle to deal with this berry. So we, ne we can never tap out of four mana unless the opponent taps out of six mana. Because crumble is going to be six mana, if I remember correctly, or is it five? Telstone is one. Telstone is one, and I forgot. I forgot if Crumble is four or five. I think Crumble might be four, so it might be five total mana that they need, which can be annoying to deal with. And there you go. What did I talk about? What did I talk about? It was five mana, right? So it was five mana. Uh, I'm gonna kill an ally because I don't want to lose my mana. So that that gets rid of one Crumble. I'm going to kill here because I think this guy's always going to die anyways. So this guy's always going to die anyways. Now, the problem here is that the opponent could have the second crumble, but they will need one more turn to be able to do it. So opponent doesn't have enough mana to do the second crumble right now. I want to see if I can... Okay, well, we get this here. So I think at this point, we just go for our win condition. At this point, I think we just go for a win condition. When Ravel Earth is tempting, I think we can pass. See what the opponent does first. Okay, yeah, now that they did the double trouble, now we can do the Ravel Earth, right? So now that they did that, we do the Ravel Earth, make it a little bit more accurate on them. We get... We need one more Ravel Earth to be triggered to level up the Sarah. The opponent could have a second crumble, and that could be annoying. Because we don't have the second Rider Negation. Half side of the second crumble. And lets us level up our Sarah. While also tapping out of... Um... Oh, he could have Tentacle Smash though, right? So Tentacle Smash is a problem that we need to watch out for. So Tentacle Smash is a problem. Because this Tentacle guy can actually do 6 damage. So I need to wait for the opponent to tap out of 4 mana. Uh, yeah, so then we need to wait for the opponent to use two more mana before we can do uh, what we need to do. Now, we could just summon Seraph here. I mean, a Seer. And have Seraph next turn leveled up. And that could also be just as good. But I would like to have Seraph first before a Seer. Although it's pretty much the same thing. Because a Seer's got to level up. And there he goes. He goes, for the, he goes for the kill right here. I guess at this point, we can actually go ahead and do the Seer. A Seer is probably a better... A Seer's a better blocker, right? A Seer's a better blocker into everything that the opponent has. We're able to trigger the Sundus right here, next turn. Um, while we have Seraph, which is also going to kill one of his units. And we go from there. Uh, let's just protect as much damage as we can. I don't think we need to block the Twisted Fate. Because they both are vulnerable. Right? So we can go like this. They are... Uh, the Seraph is going to kill the Warden Spray, unfortunately, which is kind of annoying. I don't think I need to do the Treasure Seeker just yet, although it could be a good attacker. And here we go. We even get another Seer. So now we have two Seers in our hand and a, and a second Seraph. When it could have Vengeance to kill the Seraph right here. I don't know how much that's actually going to help them, though. We can kill all their units right now. But again, I don't know how good that is either. Oh, the good thing is the Warden Spray doesn't actually get the value because he gets obliterated here. He doesn't actually die. So it doesn't trigger the last breath ability, which is pretty good for us. If we attack with a Seer to try to kill like the uh, one of his units, then he potentially just has Battle Feast to kill the Seer. But because we have two other Seers in our hand, I might be okay with that. Uh, the other option is to do the Perseverium. 
opponent still has access to so opponent unfortunately still does have access to uh do we ever just kill this nami right now i think we do i think i like killing this nami right now before he can go super crazy he could vengeance right he could vengeance the sarah and then that means that we don't have a Seraph in the field because we just get rid of our second one. Yeah, there you go. So he vengeance the Seraph, which is pretty smart in my opinion. Uh, we have two options here. We could kill, we could kill the Twisted Fate and just replay a Seer, and then the opponent is able to just replay Twisted Fate whenever they want to. I think I'm okay with this. I think I want to make sure that that Twisted Fate doesn't randomly level up for some reason. And we have two more Seers in our hand. Uh, we have plenty of value here now that we have the Sun Disenable. Obviously, not having Seraph is kind of unfortunate. We have Quicksand as well, which is pretty good for us. So we can actually just go Treasure Seeker. And even do Emperor's Guard and Walking Sense. Okay, well, that's a little bit annoying. Uh, so we do the Emperor's Guard, and then we do Walking Sands, and still have access to Quicksand, and are able to block everything that the opponent throws at us, and are able to also kill the Shelly. The fact that we were able to have the Quicksand enabled is pretty good for us. Opponent has three cards, they could technically have access to, uh... Okay, well... I mean, at this point, which way do we go? Do we go a Seer? Like, at this point, do we even need the Walking Sands? Or do we just go a Seer and call it a day? And just take the 3 damage? I think it's just a Seer. Because at most, we're taking 3 damage from Shelly. Like, that, that's that's really nothing for us. We can even summon the Golden Herald and get 2 more Sand Soldiers if we wanted to. Which I think looks pretty good. Uh, let's start with... Let's start with the Emperor's Guard. Because we have a lot of fearsome attackers. He got the freaking... Come on. Come on. Okay, we have enough blockers anyways. It's okay. We have plenty of blockers anyways, and we have quicksand. Opponent will have to have, like, right at ruination to really punish us, but if they do ruination, they also lose the whole board. At the round start, we always get two soldiers, which is pretty good. Again, the quicksand is really the biggest thing here, right? Because the quicksand means that the opponent is just losing all their units. Uh, we can even attack with everything here, and that's fine. Uh, we can drag this one with... We could force him to block with Nami, to be honest. We could force him to block with Nami. So we can go like this. Because Nami is buffing these two units first. Before he buffs the, the Crimson Letter. I guess we don't have to do it. We don't have to drag with a Seer. I think I want to keep... I want to keep this unit back. So I want to keep this unit back to guarantee that we have blockers next turn. But here, Paul is going to have a hard time, right? Okay, he gets the Anaka Boros, but that's not enough to kill this Asir. So he does lose the Crimson Blood Letter. And he's going to lose all his other units. Yeah, that's fine. Again, because we have the Quicksand, I'm not too concerned, to be honest. We even have the Sandstorm next turn, and we have enough mana to do both Sandstorm and Quicksand. So the moment that the opponent commits another unit here, we just sandstorm. The opponent will have to commit another unit. Okay, that's annoying. Like, really annoying. Because now he can technically open attack and potentially have lethal. So he could open attack with the lethal now that he has three elusives. Because his last... Well, his last elusive is never going to get to 11 attack, is it? Oh, he... Uh, well, he, he just lost the game right there. So now we just do this. We go one, two, three, and have quicksand for the last one. So we get rid of the Nami. Opponent just used the second Nami. We get rid of the Burble Fish. Um, opponent's gonna have to go all in. And then we just quicksand the last Burble Fish. And if, even if the opponent has a third Burble Fish, we still do the same thing. 
Yeah, that's fine. You still lose your whole board. And then quicksand is the biggest punish in the world. He must know that I have quicksand, right? Like, there's no way from there's no reason that I would not play the obliterate on the three elusives unless I have a way to deal with the last elusive. Like, unless I have a way to deal with the last elusive, it would never make sense for me to not play all to not obliterate all three elusives. Unfortunately, opponents out of resources now. Like that, that should be it. Sapling toss. And that's it. He even loses another blocker. We get a full attack again next turn, and that's game. Woo! I think it was fine the way that I did it though. I, I think I'd rather have killed an army there. St stop it from being able to buff up anything else that they would put in my summon. So yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Echo Cillian. Oh, I forgot how this matchup goes. I for completely forgot how this matchup goes. Um, You probably don't need the Soothsayer, right? I think the Seraph is going to be really good in this matchup. But I don't know if Double Rolling Sands is the way to go. I think Double Rolling Sands is probably pretty bad. I think Rock Hopper is really good. Rolling Sands is good. And then Seraph, once we have the Rolling Sands on the field, will be probably the way to go about it. Just make it so that he has a really awkward time summoning Echo whenever we do it. He predicts right away. So goes for the crystal, goes for the predict right away. We do we do play quicksand, right? So the other option would have been for us to draw into the quicksand, which is which is what makes that mulligan pretty good. Um Let's do Rock Hopper. Let's do Rock Hopper first, right? Like, I'm even okay taking that drop border, to be honest. I really think I need to save the Unraveled Earth until I have Seraph on the field. So that I can start, like, gun like pretty much killing all his units, like, one at a time. So, I think what we do here... And we get the Quicksand. What we do here is Perseverium. Because the Perseverium means that we're actually going to have the Perseverium triggering when we have Seraph on the field as well. I don't want to pull the drop border. I want to be able to kill that Chronomancer with the Rock Hopper. Now, opponent does have a pretty good attack next turn, which is kind of annoying. We have this time in a bottle. So opponent has two, four, five sits. If they have Echo here, okay, well, that's pretty good for us. So I think this is really good for us. This is a good sign. Because now we, like I said, now we can summon Seraph, right? Now we can summon Seraph. Meaning that this is going to trigger, right? Right away. Opponent does level up Echo, but we have Quicksand for Echo. And we're going to have Unravel Earth to kind of attack anything that the opponent summons. The only problem is that we don't really have a lot of blockers. So we are going to have to kill that drop border. Right off the bat. It's kind of annoying that the drop border got tagged. I guess it doesn't matter, right? Because I need two more landmarks anyways to level up. So it's never going to make a difference. Which should we do it? The best that we can do is the Golden Ambassador. I kind of like doing the Soothsayer into Time in a Bottle, though, to be honest. So this is two, four, six, seven more nets there, putting us to five. One is not able to summon any units. I like it like this. Oh, he's actually gonna go and summon the echo right at the back. That's actually pretty interesting to me. So he decided that he doesn't care. Now, the problem here is that for us to hit the echo, one could have so opponent could have run a negation here, but I think this is the best play that we can do. Because he stops he stops the echo from getting a hit in. Because if we attack to kill the echo, he gets a zero cost time trick. And he's able to potentially hit the revive and be able to revive the echo. By doing it this way, opponent didn't get the time trick. 
and we still kill the Echo anyways. And our Sarah levels up. We are we are a little bit, I mean, we have three Asseers and only one Seraph left. So this is almost guaranteeing that we draw a Seer. And Titan in our bottom will trigger our Sun Disk. So we do have a pretty good chance of triggering the Sun Disk and being able to just win the game. I just need to survive long enough to actually be able to do that. Rock Hopper is really good because Rock Hopper means that if the opponent summons anything else after the Rock Hopper, they, they die. Now, opponent could have a second Echo right here. Which could be kind of annoying. Not a second echo. We don't. Oh, so this is a scary now. Because we don't have. We don't have. Water negation. So we are not able to stop. A chrono break. Now, if we do quicksand. So what we can do is Soothsayer. I don't want to do the Rock Hopper. Because the Rock Hopper is giving him another card that dies. Right? What we need to do is... I think we need to commit the Quicksand right now. If we want to play around... If we want to play around the Chrono Break... We need, it, we need to make it... So if we want to play around the Chrono Break... We need to make it so that his other units don't die. And in order to do that... We need to go like this... So this means that his units are doing zero. So now even if the opponent does have a chrono break, it's a very low value chrono break. Oh, okay, so it was just this. Opponent could technically still have chrono break. But now I'm more or less I'm less scared of it, right? So chrono break means that the opponent gets three. Four. I guess the opponent does get enough value here if they have a second chrono break. I think it's just Perseverium, because this allows us to quick to kill his hand. Right? Yeah, I, I know. He, we, we, we put ourselves vulnerable, right? We put ourselves really vulnerable. Because the reason I don't want to do the Rock Hopper is because we give... Oh, maybe it had to be Rock Hopper. Maybe it had to be Rock Hopper. Because what happens now is that this is going to die to uh, the, the thing, the Hexa Crystal. Which we know that the opponent actually is going to draw into it. So maybe what we need to do is just level up the Seraph right now. Uh, sorry, level up the Asir right now. The problem is that if we do this... I like the Rock Hopper. I like the Rock Hopper first. If the opponent has the way to kill Seraph here, then we do get punished. Like if they have the Headside Crystal right now. Headside Crystal also puts us at 2 HP, so we have to be careful about that. Anything we're gonna we're gonna tag two of the units next turn. We just have to hope that the Headside Crystal wasn't in the top of their deck. I think we have to go for it. We have to just hope that we get the Asir right here. We have quicksand next turn, so it might be okay. We have quicksand next turn, so it might be okay. We level up the Sundus with a Seer attacking right here. Wow, that's so good for him. That is so good. So that gives him access to... That does give him access to everything, right? So that gives him access to everything that he needs. Uh, we have blockers everywhere i think it's always correct to kill this here this levels up the seer meaning that we hit the sun this next turn we have quicksand to once again stop his units opponent has a headset crystal in their hand already i'm pretty sure this stops the potential the, like this stops these units from potentially be able to live with chrono break that's so good. That was that was such a good augmenter experiment. I just don't understand why bother using the absorber there. Right? Why bother using the absorber there? Ha! Was was us 
summoning a Sierra mistake. I think I had to do something. I think I couldn't just stay. Now, the other option is that we have another, we have more Seers here, right? So the opponent's going to have a hard time here because a Seer is going to be on the field. We can summon the blockers. So we don't even have to commit quicksand. We can just do the Seers arise. And that's also just as good. We must tell our stories, lest they be forgotten. So we have nine. So we have enough to summon three of them. But if the opponent has the chrono break, we lose the game. If the opponent has chrono break, we lose the game. This is hard. <laughs> we know that the opponent has a head side crystal. We know that the opponent has a head side crystal. We can summon three of these, and that would be enough. Unless the bat might be okay. Actually, it probably was the Emperor's Guard, right? Because the Emperor Guard... Oh, that's huge. Ah, uh, that's so huge for them. It has to be quicksand. So it has to be quicksand for us to not die to the freaking... That's so good for them. Wow. So at most, I think we still die. We died to the Headset Crystal now. Because he got the last unit, we died to the Headset Crystal. There's absolutely no way for us to get enough blockers to be able to prevent ourselves from dying. Because we don't have Rider Negation anymore. That's so good. That was literally so good for them. That was so good for them. Because here we just died to the Headside Crystal. The other option is that the opponent didn't draw it and shuffled it away with one of their predicts. But the fact that they're keeping two mana tells me that they do have it. So no matter what, we go down to one HP. So no matter what, we go down to one HP. I guess we could go like this and we go down to two. So that we don't die to a Cillian time bomb. So this protects us against the time bomb, but it doesn't protect us against the headside crystal. And there it is. Yeah, so that, that that's unfortunate, right? The fact that the opponent ended up getting all the units ended up being so good for them. I think it was correct to summon a seer last time, because otherwise I still lose the game. I feel like I always lose the game if I don't summon a seer, so GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against... Oh no, feel the rush. Now, opponents should have a bad time here. Like, opponents should have a pretty bad time here. Yeah, hey, what's up? What's up, casual, tasteless casual? Uh... Rock Hopper is kind of interesting. I don't think it's correct, though. I like the time in a bottle. So I like the time in a bottle. Okay, this is better than, than having than having gone with the Rock Hopper. And we even get the Quicksand. Oh, we got, we got on the Ancient Prep, to be honest. I kind of want to read out the Rebel Earth right now. That's why I decided to do it that way. Unfortunately, opponent got there before we cool. So it's a little bit annoying. Rider Negation means that the opponent is never going to be able to do the Field of Rush, especially now that we have two of them. And also never going to be able to actually kill ourselves. Uh, we can go like this. Soothsay is really good. Soothsay is really good. It will protect our Sarah. I think I'm going to go like this. This is already going to be triggered in our landmarks, right? Uh, our Seraph, I mean. If the opponent plays Trundle right here, I'm passing. So the reason that I pass right there is because the opponent probably wanted to play the Trundle, right? Uh, or be able to kill our Sarah. Uh, that allowed me to kind of play around that. Now, we could play Seraph here because we have the mana for the Rider Negation. So he ends up not being a big deal. So we can Rider Negate his Vengeance. Yeah. Here we go. I don't want to sacrifice my mana, so I'm just going to kill the unit. And we have a second battle negation for next turn. 
Uh, we can even attack right here. Not a big deal. Let's just push our three damage. No hourglass is kind of annoying though. Okay, so he's gonna level up our Sarah. Now he is able to get a lot of value here. He's gonna have eight mana. Oh, <laughs> that's honestly that's very cheeky. That's very very cheeky. I like it. I like it. Unfortunately for opponent, we're able to do this. Right? And stop him from killing our landmarks. And then we're able to play... We're able to play the Soothsayer, which is always correct. That will be protect our Seraph, right? We can just block right here, call it a day. Now, opponent does have enough mana to summon Feel the Rush next turn. No, 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 he's at 10. So, we need to level up a Seer. We need to level up a Seer. We're able to do this. Stops the opponent from being able to summon anything. Opponent could have Vengeance plus a Balfis to kill our Seraph. Wow. I think I have to let this go. So let's say that the opponent... Opponent could also have... Because opponent doesn't have the 10 mana to do She Who Wonders here. That's why I wasn't so scared about it. Because he could do Feel the Rush here. Which is kind of annoying, but we have Quicksand to protect us against Feel the Rush. Yeah, so the Quicksand protects us against Feel the Rush. Um, he eats up both of these Rolling Sands. The it that stairs stays alive. How do we do this? This is going to be close. This is going to be really close. The fact that we had to use both of those um, both of those things earlier actually ends up being really bad for us. Because now we're going to be at 2 HP, right? So we had to use both right and negation earlier. We have Quicksand. Opponent doesn't even have Overwhelming this unit. So we don't even have to use the Quicksand right now. Ideally, I think it's actually like this. So this means that we play... So this means that we can play around Atrocity, right? So now we don't worry about Atrocity. So we don't have to worry about atrocity because opponent at most can only do 10. So at most the opponent here can only do 10. And we summon a seer. We're even killing. Does he kill the trundle? Should kill the trundle, right? Because the trundle is less mana. So we're even killing the trundle right here. So we kill the trundle. We're able to kill the Trundle. His Trindamir is not leveled up yet, meaning that he's actually going to die. He's going to get obliterated, right? Um, How does he win this now? She Who Wonders doesn't matter anymore. And he doesn't have the 10 mana to do She Who Wonders anyways. He only has 9 mana next turn. We have our champions. 3, 6... Yeah, there you go. He kills. He kills the. He kills the uh, Trundle. We kill the Trindamir. Next turn. Hmm. Let's do Rock Hopper. That get, that means that the opponent is not able to summon anything because anything they summon is gonna just die to the uh, Seer uh, to the Sarah. <laughs> it doesn't even work like that, my friend. We could do the Seraph right of Arcane, but then we lose to the opponent having like... We could just kill the Trindamir as well. That's also always an option. We could kill the Trindamir. We just we have to always keep mana for Quicksand to be able to stop an atrocity. So we have to be careful about what exactly we do here. So we can go like this. Right? If I kill this now, does he get obliterated? No, he will summon it. He will summon it. We could just kill it like this.
If the enemy unit will die, obliterate instead. So why is it showing the Seraph coming down? Oh, it's because he doesn't die. I get it. I get I get what's happening here. I get what's happening here. I think we just go like this and take it slow. We have quicksand to be able to stop the Trindamir from leveling up. Balfis? Hmm. That's a good one. So the Balfis stops the Sarah from actually killing whatever unit he summons next, because this is going to kill the Spiderling. It said that we can just summon a second Rock Hopper. And do the same thing. And again, we want to be able to keep mana for quicksand for a potential atrocity, especially because the opponent is keeping exactly seven mana, right? So the opponent is specifically keeping seven mana, which can kind of be scary. We could have pulled the Trendamir with this guy. Okay, so now that he did it like this. Do we ever do the second Seraph right now, then? Like, do we ever go... Or do we just go Endless Debout? Or do we just draw? Because we have... I like the Endless Debout. I get punished here by another... Um, Feel the Rush, right? I get punished here by a second field of rush. That's not enough. That is not enough. That is not enough. Woo! And we even get the landmark destroyed right here. Now we don't even have to worry about um we don't even have to worry about atrocity right now. It's pretty good for us. Let's just draw right now. That's a good one. That's a good draw. We can just draw right now. We can do time in a bottle on the sarcophagus. Or we can do Seraph Rite of Arcane. I think we actually don't tap out of 4 mana. Now, the problem here is that we do lose to an atrocity on next turn, right? Because it's this. They are... Oh, man. Am I getting baited by the eye? I want to keep the mana for the Seraph in case the opponent has Balfis and Vengeance. I think I'm getting, I think I'm getting baited by the eye. Okay, no, I'm not getting baited by the eye. That's what, that's, that, that's what I was confused about. Now, here we summon an exact copy. So check this out. We do this, right? Summons an exact copy. We do time in a bottle. That's doing 10 damage. And then we attack with both Seraph that both have spell shield. And we win the game. Woo! So, because remember, it does it does 5 damage to the Nexus or a unit every time that you destroy a landmark or at the start of every turn. So by us duplicating the Seraph and then timing down the landmark, we were able to do 10 damage at burst speed. And they have two Seraph that both have Spell Shield to be able to open attack for Lethal. So yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Poppy, Bar, Jarvan. So, huh. Quicksand is really good. Right about Kenny is really, really good, right? Right about Kenny should be really, really good, really good. And so is Quicksand because he can stop the Broadwind and also kind of give us favorable trades. So I think I'm going to actually keep my whole hand. Now, it does mean that we have a lower chance to join into a champion slater. But I think that's gonna be okay because here we do the rock hopper into endless debout. Right? Opponent doesn't get a good attack here, because obviously if they do, they, they they'll just they have to sacrifice the Broadway into a rock hopper, which is completely fine with me. We have two options here. We can do the endless debout, right? Or we can do a second rock hopper. I think it's better to do the endless debout right here. Because we can always sacrifice the endless debout into anything that the opponent might have and have Rite of Arcane open, right? Which is the big deal here. So I think I'm actually gonna pass. So I'm actually gonna pass here. And let the opponent be the one to pull. 
Because if I open attack with it, if I attack with it as it is, all right, well, if the opponent's going to do that, then we definitely need to kill this. Question is, how do we kill it? Do we need to kill it right now? Because we can always do the Rider of Arcane after, after the fact. Right? So we can always do the Rider of Arcane after the fact to kill the Poppy. It is kind of risky, though, not to do it right now. Now, we do have enough mana next thing to do Seraph plus Rider of Arcane. If we don't, if we don't kill the puppy right now, when it gets a favorable trade, so I think we need to just kill it, right? I think we just need to kill it, call it a day. That way he doesn't get a favorable trade over here. We can always kill the pro again next turn, because we can pull it. The opponent's gonna have to sacrifice the Broadwind if they want to attack with both units right here. We have two options. We can do Rock Copper and Sarah. Or we can do uh, Unravel Earth, right? I think I'm gonna do the Rock Up, right? I think I actually should hold on to the Seraph for a little bit longer. Just because... Ooh, okay, now that we have double Seraph, though... Now that we have double Seraph, maybe it's actually correct. I'm willing to sacrifice one Seraph. He also gives me access to the second Rider of, Ar Rider of Arcane, which can be really crucial. Right? Which I think is actually worth it. We have Quicksand. Okay. I'm completely fine with this Concerta Strike. Like, I'm actually completely okay with this Concerta Strike. It just means that we will not use that. Uh, we can attack with both. We can attack with both because if the opponent wants to block here, that's okay with me. I'm always taking this trade. It just means that we do not use the second Seraph until we really have a level up, right? And that means this one Concerta out of the way, which the opponent used now. That's a good target for the uh, for the uh, Rolling Sand, so that's a little bit unfortunate there. Now, I guess opponent could have Jarvan here, and that could be a little bit annoying. That's not a Jarvan. I think I like the Divide again. I think I like the Divide again because he's gonna have to he's gonna have to trade his fleet for the Tracker for it, and that's fine. Because again, we're gonna have a second Seraph here. Although again, we're not gonna play the second Seraph. Because I don't want to lose to another uh, Concerta Strike. Although, we do have access to... We do have access to uh, Rana Negation. Which might make it okay. But then we also lose... We also lose to... Uh, we also lose to a Jarman. So I think it's actually correct not to play Seraph. Obviously, we ended up joining the, th the third Seraph. So I'm okay playing the Seraph. This also means that we guarantee to be able to get a Seer. Since we know that we have already seen all the Seraphs in our hand. Opponent does get a lot of value here, which is kind of unfortunate for us. But everything that the opponent plays is going to get a little bit punished here. Now, we could play the Seraph here. I mean, the Seer here. But again, I don't think there's any reason to. Considering the fact that it means that it's going to die, right? We have one blocker here for the Swiftling Light. Which is pretty good. We have quicksand for everything else. Uh, we can summon another blocker right here. Okay, well, that's a little bit annoying. I think I like the Seraph here. So this is going to be five. So obviously the Seraph gets punished by the Swiftling Lancer. But we do have the quicksand and we have another Seraph anyways. I think I like the Seraph. Because we can just summon a, you can just summon a Seer this time. Right? We can just summon the Aseer this turn and be able to level up the Sundas. At most, the opponent can kill the Seraph with the Silver War Silver Swift Rain Lancer, but I don't think that's going to be enough. The other option here is to do the Quicksand instead, which will keep both our units alive and will let us play around. So this lets us play around a Rally, right? So we do this, it keeps both our units alive, and now we don't have to worry about a Rally. And even if the opponent has a rally, they're going to get punished here because we're going to have access to a seer right off the bat. So let's say that they rally. Rally's not going to do anything. We leveled up the Seraph. Yeah, they say rally, right? So rally's going to allow them to quote unquote kill my Seraph. But it doesn't matter because here we get the seer. We level up the Sundis. We're able to kill his bird. He can kill the Seraph if he wanted to, but we have a second Seraph, a third Seraph in our hand. 
Uh, so we just resummon Seraph right away. And now everything is... Now we have the Sun this leveled up. And he shouldn't have a way to actually... Like, he can't even attack. He cannot even attack with the bar. He cannot even kill the Seraph either, because he has six health. I guess he was hoping that we will whiff, right? So he was hoping that we will miss and not hit the Asir. But he didn't know that we had a third Seraph in our hand already. So we were guaranteed to always hit the Asir there. And there we go. GG's. Yeah, unfortunately for the opponent, we ended up getting very quickly able to level up our champions. Uh, and we were able to deal with the Poppy right away, so he was not able to get big enough to actually present that threat to us. So, yeah. So, in this matchup, we'll be going up against Silver Action, which could be pretty bad for us. Could be pretty bad for us. Uh, Quick set is not bad, to be honest, but maybe not this early. Maybe we want to go. LSD Body is good because it's a good blocker. We're going to probably get the Rock Hopper. Perfect. Desert Naturalist is pretty good um, because it can synergize with the Endless Devout. Ancient Hourglass is not that great at the moment, but it could be great later on. He gets, he gets his early drop. Kind of annoying. If he doesn't open attack, we're able to do the Rock Hopper. That's perfect. I think he got punished by doing that because he doesn't really have a great attack here. I think I'm always blocking this, by the way. So I think I'm always blocking that because I'd rather just kill that now instead of having that stay in the field, continuously doing damage every single turn. And we have a good blocker here anyways, right? For next turn. I'm going to attack with it. So I'm going to attack with it because we can just do the Desert Naturalist next turn and have blockers for days. So I'm willing to do that. Reporting can open attack here if they want to or... They can play into the Desert Naturalist. If they open attack, I think I'm actually going to do Rabble Earth before we do the Desert Naturalist. So they have an option here. We also have a second Desert Naturalist for whenever the opponent levels up action. Okay. So now we go like this. We even have the Rattle Calling now. The second Desert Naturalist, I'm going to save it for... Um, or the Warlord's Horror, by the way. I think that's the best time to play it. If we go like this, I think we definitely just go like this, by the way. I think we just go like this right now. This is pushing a lot of damage. A lot of fearsome damage. Opponent's, opponent doesn't even have a good blocker for this card either. I guess they could summon the Walking Sands, and that would be kind of annoying. Don't know if I care about that enough. Don't know if I care about that enough. I think I just sacrificed it with the Desert Naturalist. I think I tell the opponent if you wanna if you if you don't wanna if you don't wanna block this guys, be my guess. If you wanna take 10 damage like that, be my guess. A serious about to be leveled up. We have the Rider Calling. He's taking 10 damage. Okay. Braver than I am. Alright, he does get another one, which is kind of unfortunate. We could time in a battle right now, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I guess we can do it now. Now that the opponent tapped out of mana. We get the Seraph. We get the Seraph, which I think is going to be critical here. And which means that now, by the way, this very sun, this is going to trigger on turn six. So Seraph is able to survive because of the Ancient Hourglass. So if the opponent wants to attack like this, I think I'm okay. The only thing I will have to be concerned about here is going to be at, uh, a rally. And I don't think opponent has it. So I'm going to go like this. Play a Seer next turn. Okay. Sure. Again, this whole time I'm just playing for the Ancient Hourglass value. Because this also negates the silver level up right so this also negates the silver level up which is a-okay -okay with me he's even gonna go there we kill his whole boar we kill his whole boar this is five eight silver's not close to level up uh we ancient hourglass then a seer 
We start killing his whole board. Uh, this is going to kill the treasure seeker, right? And then we summon a seer, and it's going to kill the sieber. So right away, we kill both his units. Because watch this. Watch what's going to happen next. Watch what's going to happen next. When Seraph comes out, he kills the treasure seeker. Then we summon the seer. He kills the sieber. At first speed, the opponent has no way to react to it. And we get another Sarah. And we get another Seer. And we have Rider Negation. And we have Rider Arcane. And we even have the Senatulus. So, unfortunately for opponent, I don't think there's any out for them here anymore. He gets the full movie experience. And gets slammed right down. And, and, this is also lethal. Because we opponent, opponent took 10 damage earlier. So even if the opponent summons one more unit, we're able to still have lethal because the Seer summons a 5-2, right? And we have Rider Negation to protect against a single combat Arkham Set of Strike. So GG's. Hey, welcome back everybody. You can see we have some pretty good games there. I think, you know, we had a lot of fun with this deck. Uh, I, I really think this deck is pretty strong, as you saw there, with, with the different matchups that we got and how we were able to actually get to where we need to be. Uh, it's just, I feel like people have just probably gotten bored of playing Sundays, and that's probably why you don't see it that much. I think the deck still does fair, very, very well. Uh, in terms of Mulligan, I think you never want to keep a Seer. I don't think you ever want to keep a Seer. You always keep a Seer, and uh, you always want to keep some of your early units. I don't mind keeping Ancient Prep. I don't mind keeping Rock Hopper. I don't like keeping Treasure Seeker unless I'm going against Agro. So Rock Hopper, Ancient Prep, uh, Endless Devout are my main keeps. Soothsayer, if you're going to get Snatsus and you need to worry about Scorched Earth. Uh, Seraph, if you if the opponent has no way to deal with it. Because if you can enable a Seraph early on and then have like Unravel Earth and other landmarks, it can get really out of control really quickly. So I will keep Seraph if the opponent has no way to actually deal with him. But usually, again, we want to go for Endless Devout, Rock Hopper, Ancient Preparation, and kind of start working yourself in there. Uh, Unravel Earth, I like keeping one of sometimes as well. That's also pretty good too. So yeah, those, those are your different options. As always, hope you enjoyed these games. If you like the video, please make sure to drop a like below. You can also subscribe to us. We post all our videos every single day. We also stream on Twitch at Twitch Street Terminal, where we stream three to four times a week. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again next time.